Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, I'm going to discuss a very important interview question uh, considering the machine learning algorithm that is called as linear regression and logistic regression. Uh, we'll try to understand that. We'll also try, I'll also give a solution that how you can actually solve that also. Now, today's interview question is all about multicollinearity. Now, what exactly it is? Now, consider guys, you're solving a, a problem statement, a data science problem statement with the help of machine learning. And you have various features like F1, F2, F3, F4, and uh, dependent features like sales or anything, okay? And consider that it may be a linear regression problem or a logistic regression problem. Uh, logistic regression basically means classification. Linear regression is normally a regression problem statement. Now, when you have actually considered this problem statement, uh, suppose consider that you have actually created a model and after creating a model, your peer, your senior peer has actually told you there is some kind of multicollinearity in your features. You know, can you try to resolve this or can you showcase me that how much uh, multicollinear are those features exactly? So this is the common question that uh, usually whenever we are reviewing some of the models, considering a regression or classification problem, we usually take this into consideration. Now, what exactly is multicollinearity? Now guys, suppose I told you that you have features like F1, F2, F3, F4, and you have a dependent feature. When you're creating a correlation heat map or correlation with different, different values, that basically means we are actually finding out the correlation with each and every feature, like F1 with F2, what is the correlation? F2 to F3, what is the correlation? F3 to F4, what is the correlation? And with respect to the output features also, what is the correlation? Now suppose if I find out a scenario wherein F1 and F2 are highly correlated, okay? And the output features, that is anything like a sale or classification feature that we have those are actually dependent on both f1 and f2 okay but since f1 and f2 are highly correlated suppose it is more than 85 percent correlation okay, correlated can i just drop f1 feature and just use f2 feature because this f1 and f2 are like very very highly correlated right more than 90 percent suppose if it is highly correlated it is not useful to actually use both the features I can use at either of them, right? I can use either F1 or F2. So this kind of multicollinearity can actually, uh, you know, bring some kind of disadvantage with respect to your model performance because you are doing the repeated things. Okay. Now, how do we solve this particular problem? That is the most important thing into it, right? So there are various ways how you can actually solve it. The first thing is that you try to find out after creating the correlation heat map, you try to find out that which all features apart from the dependent feature, which all features are highly correlated, which are highly correlated like more than 90%. So by writing a simple block of code, wherein you try to find out which are correlation are highly correlated more than 90%, you just take that particular feature and you can drop it from your data set, right? And by this, you can actually solve the particular problem. Now, this will work if your data set is actually small, okay? When I say actually small, if you have very less number of features. Usually this kind of problem will not actually be uh, useful when you have many number of features. Suppose you have 150 features, 160 features in your complete data set. This kind of problem will not actually work. Now, how do you solve that in that specific use case? For that specific use case, what we do is that guys, we try to take all that particular feature and we basically apply something called as ridge or lasso regression. Now, you know that in ridge and lasso regression, what happens is that as the number of features increases right, and with respect to that, when we are actually trying to find out the coefficient, right? At that time to penalize those parameters, we use some lambda value inside that region lasso regression. And I've already explained in my YouTube video how region lasso regression actually works. So this is a solution for multicollinearity. You have to explain in this specific manner. If you have less number of data sets, what you can do is that you can create a correlation heat map and you can actually put up a condition that wherever the feature, like all the independent feature, if it is greater than 90%, okay, you can actually drop that specific feature. But there is one disadvantage in this also. You are losing some kind of information, okay? You are losing some kind of information. That is the second issue, okay? One, you are actually removing. If your data set is small, it will work well. Okay, the second thing is that you are losing some kind of information from there because you are dropping some feature, right? So in order to solve that, you can actually go and perform with rich and lasso regression. And for that, for the theoretical understanding, already I've created a video regarding that. You can actually go and watch it. Okay. And <clears throat> definitely the next question that I would like to ask with respect to linear regression is that what is the difference between gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent? Okay. Think about this. 
okay this will just be like a kind of homework for you because these are some of the interview questions that are asked you know many of my subscribers many of my students have actually told it right so please make sure that uh, if you get the answer for stochastic and gradient stochastic uh, sorry gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent you can put down your comment in the description box or uh, not in the description box in the comment section i'll have a look and i'll definitely give a reply if you are exactly right okay so yes this was all about this particular video i hope you like it please do subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed again i'll be coming up with more interview questions as we go ahead so thank you one and all have a great day bye bye